Shortly after we moved to South Carolina, we purchased our first home. And along the way, we did a lot of home projects, some that I shared with you here. But this time we decided to take on our biggest home project yet. Something that people have told us we were crazy, ambitious, wild. I don't know, what do you think? It wasn't that bad. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but we're gonna take you an inside look on our biggest home project yet. So we picked up the flooring. We ended up picking it at one of the local warehouse. Found the best deal. So now the fun part begins. Oh, we've officially cleared pretty much everything out. Ready, dude? What's today? What is today, dude? Demolition day. It's demolition day. <laughs> yeah. You wanna break stuff? Yeah. <laughs> No glue! How we ring in the New Year's 2019, right here, tearing up the floors. Cheers. <laughs> got all the vinyl except for the edges and we got all the carpet in the main living area out um, all we'll have left is the carpet out here in the hallway wood floors out there and then obviously the edges where the vinyl was tacked down to get up um, one thing we did notice we didn't even take this into consideration all this glue residue from the carpet it, it's not that easy to get off. You see Danielle's scraping at it with the shovel. It's time to find out what's under the wood. So they use some like hardcore glue up in here. So we are gonna have to really scrub this down. Once we get this all up, I'm assuming it goes throughout the whole wood floors, which is a decent amount. So these are a pain in the butt too. If you have carpet, they're the tack for where they tack down the carpet. You gotta get them up and then underneath is a nail. And this nail, unfortunately, when you pop it up, it pops the concrete up too, so now we have to fill those gaps. So we are officially calling it for night one. Um, it's midnight, just past midnight, happy New Year's. We started about seven o'clock, so about five hours worth of work. Um, not much more since the last time we updated. All right, so a little bit of an update. Um, yesterday I was at work, but Danielle and one of our neighbors um, came over. They've, they've done this before, they've done flooring. So. He gave us some great tips that I want to kind of share with you later, but they got up all the wood flooring and what he ended up using, um, which he said they tried so many things and what worked best was actually this, which is a shingle remover. You can pick these up at any, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. 
um, and he said that what's worked best. So now there's all this glue you can see, and we got to even this all out. So what he said worked best, which we're gonna do, is um, a floor stripper. You can rent them. Um, Home Depot rents them out, so I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow. We had all those patches we need to fill. Well, he said what you can use is just um, sealant, just a, a polyurethane sealant, and you just use a caulking gun, put that inside the little concrete holes, since they're small holes. It'll fill those up, it'll hold strong. Um, it's not like concrete, so you don't have to worry about the mess and the mix of concrete, so. That's what you could see is drying in all these spots. There's all these patches. So those are all failed. Those take 24 hours to dry. good job of getting a lot of the big stuff up and then for the little stuff what we've been doing is this little little guy here <laughs> so obviously they use excessive glue because they don't care about the people that have to pull it up last resort is gonna be like goo gone or acetone I, I have a feeling we're gonna have to end up going that route because what can happen is if there's a little divots in places and someone steps on it and it tilts, it can buckle. So you don't want that. Okay, so the question is, what is your thought on doing the goo gone to get the rest? Because part of me is like, the, the stripper isn't gonna get really any more. And the hand stuff, I could probably do it, but it's gonna take, I feel, just as long as it would waiting for the goo gone to do its thing. And the sander won't. We can try. I haven't tried the sander yet, but we can try. I just feel like because there's so many little spots everywhere, it's gonna take forever. All right, time to see what the sander can do. I mean, it's working. I just feel like it's still gonna be a long process to get this whole room. Okay, so it works. It's just gonna be a long and tedious process though. Um, looking pretty good up here. Been another eventful day. Uh, broke my sound bar. It somehow fell off, I don't know, whatever. But yeah, this is the stuff that HGTV won't show you. Just kidding, love you Chip and Joanna. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, they're, they're, um, they always make it look like demo day is just smashing walls and cool stuff like that, but it's this tedious back-breaking work that is the hard part. All right, so as we get close to being ready to lay the actual vinyl tiles, one of the things you have to decide is you want an evenness on your ends of your, your vinyl so that this plank on the first one isn't, you know, the full seven inches and the last one isn't two inches. But the main place you want that is your focal point. So you have to decide where your focal point is. For If it's a square room, obviously, it's your ends. You want those ends to be the same. For us, our main focal point is this entryway because it's such a long stretch. What we did is we measured out, let me show you over here, that we can fit almost exactly 10 planks across this. So this is what we want to have. We want to have them even. So now. We're not starting here. We're gonna start on the furthest wall so we only lay planks one way. So now what we have to do is find the, the part of this, either the center or you know, the edge, and measure back and decide how much of that first one we're gonna to have to cut off to make sure it starts with a full plank right here, if that makes sense. Because if we start with a full plank, we might end with a half plank here and then it screws this up. Okay, so that was 115 inches from that edge to that wall where we're gonna start. So now what we do is I have seven inch plank, so we take that 115, divide it by seven. So we'll cut three inches off the top, 
that'll take that to 115 and then should make it so we line up just perfectly here. So we're back at square one. Fortunately, the planks are just shy of seven inches. So measuring across doesn't add up. What we're gonna try now is do the chalk line again off of this wall and then measure back and try and figure out We ran the chalk line and actually lined up to the very first measurement we did. And then from the chalk line, we measured over three feet, three feet, three feet, and then the last foot to get close to the wall. Then what we did is we went from the chalk line to the far wall where we're gonna start, and we measured. And we took that and we divided it by 16th of an inch because we knew that the boards are a 16th inch short of seven inches. So then in an array of math, we took that number, figured out how many sixteenths of an inch it was going to be, and then divided by the size of the boards. And then once we found that, then we found out how many boards it fit, and then we could determine how much was left over, which ended up being 4.5 inches left over. So we're starting with a 4.5 inch board. So then what we did is we measured from the chalk line to the wall and lined up evenly so that there's a 4.5 inch line. And this wall is crooked, so it's based off the chalk line over there. So this should make it that we end up with a straight line when we get all the way back over here where it's important. Lucky piece number one. Yeah, because if we flip it, and mark it, that'll cut off this end that much. Yeah, give me, because technically you're not supposed to do a full, a full run on the first one. So we will do this, but this one. Because it's supposed to be stacked. Yeah, so we'll start. So it's 2.30 in the morning. We're gonna call this the end of day four. Let me show you what we've done. This was a pain in the ass. Such a small area, all these little edges, and then this crap here took us forever to figure out how to get these, all these little pieces, the big piece underneath. As far as cutting them, if you're going um, perpendicular you just score it and it snaps right off but in small edges or if you're going parallel we've been using an oscillating tool whatever the multi-tool to, to actually cut it because it, it just doesn't snap right going the the parallel way it only snaps easy going perpendicular so today is day six yesterday day five Danielle 
I was at work. She knocked out all of this over here. Um, what we ended up having to do is we couldn't get it to line up. It just it wasn't lining up. So what we decided, we're just going to we're going to put a transition piece in here since it's kind of going into our bedroom. So that'll cover that gap. So we're going to do that there. Um, but today, I guess we're calling this day six now. We started the next run going that way. And because we're blocking the garage door, we put the fridge and the stove out and put them in the garage. So as far as timeline, people have said, you know, does it really take that long to do it? And here's the thing. Obviously, this is our first time doing it. And second, what takes time is all this stuff. Cutting, measuring, and cutting all the different angles and sizes. And so literally, this wall over here, I spent hours this morning. I'm talking probably five, at least hours, just on these first two rows along this wall. And then in the last two hours, we did the rest of that hallway all the way across, all the way down to here. The reason we stopped, I'm gonna kind of show you what happened, because we're off by a little bit. So we originally, if you remember, we measured it so that this wall would have the piece on it. And you see we're off by just the slightest amount. We're gonna be off by just a little bit. And I know where the culprit is. What happened is because we measured from this wall and we were going this way. Well, when we decided to do this transition piece, this little gap is where we're losing that piece. That's, that's the extra little bit that measured out that's missing over here. So we're gonna have to trim these pieces and it's fine, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, and there's no way we're starting all over again. So yesterday, day seven, I was at work all day. Danielle, when she got home from work, finished up the little strip that was left on the wall, and then the rest of over here, and then I'm starting here today. So calling the end of day eight, it was kind of a short day today because Danielle worked and I was doing real estate. I was doing some showings today, so short day, but I did finish off here in front of the bar and then past the bar. As you can see all the way here, over to this side of the sink. We filled it in there. Yo, 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 welcome to day 10. So yesterday I was at work, but Danielle knocked out a whole ton. She finished all this section in here in the kitchen and even over here, which is the tough part. I know that took her a while to get all those angles and cuts and stuff like that. So. We're pretty much done with this area and you can see the furniture has started to come back in. So now all we have left is this section over here. It's 11 o'clock, I'm tapping out. Danielle's still out there working, but I can only take so many nights of no sleep, two hours of sleep, whatever. All right, so we're coming to the end of day 11. Sorry, I gotta be quiet, no one's sleeping over here. So Danielle last night, And today what we're doing is the transitions. So those are glued down. So we still have more transitions to do, um, but we're calling it a night because we're gonna need to buy another one. And as far as what we used, we used the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. So we just picked up the quarter round, or I just picked up the quarter round. And as you can see, it's way out the back of the truck. For whatever reason, they cut it in 16 foot length. So um, let's hope our strap down work did okay because that is hanging out the back. I made it. Say yay, yay, Noah. Yay, yay. Woo, woo. It made it. All in one piece. I think. Yeah. Survived. That was sketchy. It was like bouncing and I thought it was shifting at first. I thought we were gonna lose it. So the crown molding, not the crown molding, the quarter round, um, we're actually gonna pay someone to do it. We've gotten to the point where we're, we're, we're good. We're gonna have someone else do it. It's a lot of work and um, in our minds, the, the price we're getting for it is a lot better than having to try and do it all ourselves. So. That's the way we look at it. All right, so this transition did not stick. So we're gonna take it off, scrape the glue off and start over. And you can see 
how we do this because I forgot to film all the other transitions. Yeah, so it missed. That's the problem. So it ended up in this gap. So it wasn't, that's why it wasn't sticking because it was here in this gap, but you can see it hit over here. So we can either pull it back if it'll reach or fill that gap with a piece of wood. I'm gonna measure and we'll see. Okay, so I'm ready to actually put this one down. So I'm gonna show you how we do it on this one. So you can see it has a little rise on this side. It's not a huge rise. So one of the tips we learned along the way is cut back the carpet padding a little further. So that way this goes down lower because the first couple times the padding was sitting up too high. It just didn't want to sit flat and was pushing it back. But let me get to this. So, so I had Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. So we'll run some along this. And then we'll leave the weights on overnight and hopefully this time it works better. The guys just came and finished the quarter on all of it, but where I mismeasured. Um, so let me show you that, and then I'll show you what our next step is. Well, we're gonna be doing caulking, obviously, to fill in the gaps that were left on the, the shoe molding. Um, we told them we take care of that part. And then this is brown silicone, and all we're gonna do is these gaps down here where you just see little gaps where it didn't line up or it got cut short, and we have a couple. We'll just fill it in with this, and since it's brown, it'll kind of blend it really nice. So we cut the edges of the quarter round just to make it look more finished and then we caught all of it down as well as fill in the holes and then now we've been filling in the gaps underneath the molding and as we go to do the very last one what are the odds one short We've had people ask, what did you do with the fireplace? So with the fireplace, we just bought a smaller quarter round, spray painted it black to match the fireplace mantle, and then we glued it onto here. We just have to do some touch-up paint on it, and I think that'll pretty much do it. This is pretty much the end of it. Are you excited to finally be done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>